Yo, 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 everybody. Welcome to the Killjoy Jake YouTube channel. That's me, I guess. <laughs> welcome in, welcome in. Welcome, welcome. We have some wild news, like so much wild news that I just couldn't fit it all into a fun little video. So here we are doing a long ass live stream talking about all this very exciting stuff. Oh my God. I whew, smacked in the face with the Alien Romulus trailer today, which was so exciting and so good. So good. Like, it hurts it was so good. They don't make trailers like that anymore, where it's like kind of leaves a lot up to the imagination. I was so very happy with it. We have so much to talk about regarding that. Beetlejuice 2 has some brand new stills and a new trailer coming. Um, I have some Scream 7 rumors to talk about and another little indie horror flick called In a Violent Nature that I'm very excited about. Uh, we're talking about a lot of movies today that I personally feel like are going to be on my top 10 list of the entire year. Uh, all three of these across the board. Um, so I'm excited. I'm very excited. Let's let's get into it. But before we do that, I want to say hi to some of the wonderful folks that have, are joining me for a little, little hangout sesh today. What's up? What's up, my dude? Bro is opening an instant live. You're damn right. I also don't feel like editing today. So... <laughs> So, so we're doing a little stream talking about all this fun news. Sorry, I'm cursed. What's up, dog? Heading off to work, but I hope everyone has a good stream. Thanks for stopping in and saying, hey, dog. Appreciate it. Thanks for being here. Blucka is saying Alien Romulus looks like the most promising horror of the year. Hard to disagree there, man. I mean, genuinely, I think this is going to be a top 10. It looks like actually scary, which is awesome. I wasn't crazy about the last two in this franchise. I don't know. They just didn't do it for me. Um, this feels like we're going back to what makes the original Alien specifically great and, and terrifying, which I'm so happy about. I, I could not be more excited for this movie. It's Fede Alvarez, who did the Evil Dead remake, Don't Breathe, and was a producer on the Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie from 2022. So is this going to be good? I think, yes, this is a surefire bet. This is one you don't want to miss in theaters if you see nothing else this year. So, Blocka, I'm very, very, very excited for it. RJ's also praising it, saying um, Alien Romulus had a badass trailer. By the way, why starting so early today, Jake? Jake's busy. I wasn't even going to do anything for the channel today. And then all this news came out, and I'm like, okay, well, we got to do something. <laughs> I, I literally have... Um, I have two people downstairs in my living room right now working on stuff because I I got to do this. Like it's it's today's crazy. This has been the busiest week I think of my life. Um I don't know. I don't I, I don't know when it's going to stop. I'm not complaining. Things are great. Um so many secret things in the works though. That's all I'm going to say. Garrett Peck, thanks for being a channel member, my friend. Saying, "Wow, it seems like it was only a few weeks ago I heard Alien Romulus had been greenlit. There's a trailer already?" Oh, dude, yeah. Oh, Garrett, man, this has been, I've been talking about this for a few years now because I've been so excited about it. Um, but the thing that I'm the most excited about is the fact that, you know, Fede Alvarez, one of the most underrated horror directors in the space, in my opinion, is doing this flick. I'm, I was hyped. Like when I got that news, I believe it was early last year, early last year, maybe, maybe around the same time last year. I, I lost my mind. I'm like, that's the biggest news we've had in horror in, in a very long time. That's so exciting. Um, and I, I'm expecting this is going to be an absolute banger, dude. So I, I've been I've been trying to do updates on it. it. Doesn't seem like there's as much interest in this movie as you know some other things out there, which is a shame because, like I was saying earlier, this is going to be a top ten of the year. I'm predicting. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is one to get excited for. Amy is with us. What's up, Amy? How's it going? I love the way you spell your name, by the way, Amy. I think it's dope. Hey, Jake, do you think Scream Seven will have the same problems as The Snowman? <laughs> Like, are, you, are we just talking about any random snowman? Well, yes, you know, if it gets hot, I do believe Scream 7 will melt. So I'll tell you what, they, they're fucked, frankly. No, I'm, I'm so kidding. Um, <laughs> Scream 7, uh, I do think it'll have issues. I'm going to be completely honest with you. I know everyone's rejoicing right now. We have Nev Campbell back as Sidney Prescott. Don't get me wrong. Your boy's happy. Kevin Williamson directing this bad boy. Guy Busick's writing. I mean, this is a dream team in a, in a lot of ways. But I'm worried. I'm still worried. I feel like... A lot of this, a lot of these announcements are kind of just spyglass getting like keys in our face. Ooh, something shiny. Come on now. C come on back. Come on. Be fans of us. That's how it comes off a little bit to me um, from spyglass. I feel like I still got to know a little more about the film before I can really get excited for it. Things are, you know, things are starting to turn. I'll say that things are starting to the, the, the gray clouds are starting to dissipate. Let's say that. 
But as of right now, I am still worried about the film. I don't know if it's going to be good or not. So we'll, we'll see, Amy. I hope so. I hope it's great. I hope it's a banger. I hope it's the best one in the whole franchise. That would be so cool. Mr. Rick is saying, good day. How are you? So glad I caught this live. Uh, let's talk about upcoming horror. Dude, throw it out there. We have so much to talk about. I mean, wh what is it? It's, it's three o'clock my time. Whatever time it is in your area. Welcome in. Welcome in. If it's late, if it's early, whatever. Thanks for being here. Appreciate you. We have so many updates. If it's Beetlejuice 2, if it's Alien Romulus, a brand new teaser trailer, which looks dope as fuck. We'll talk about it. Don't worry. Um, so much to talk about. Scream 7 rumors. Um, ask me about that if you're interested. And like I said, that In a Violent Nature movie, dude. I, whew, very excited for that. We got a trailer for that movie as well today. And it looks like if you're like, what, Jake, what is that? What is In a Violent Nature? You might not know and you might not care, but that's okay. I'm going to tell you anyways. It is basically Friday the 13th from Jason's perspective. To, to sum it up down to its finest point, um, it looks awesome. It looks very, very awesome. I, I don't know. The trailer scared the fuck out of me. One of the scariest horror trailers I've seen in a very long time. And, you know, just real quick, I want to throw up a shot from that. Because this is the one that not too many people are talking about. And I get it. Like Alien Romulus, Beetlejuice too. There's exciting stuff there, but I do just want to throw throw some screen grabs of this up on the screen. Oh, that one's pretty gross. But here's like our Jason style killer. I think his name is Johnny in this. And you're kind of fall. It kind of looks like we're going to be following him, like literally with the camera throughout the whole movie as he's going after different um, teenagers at like some kind of summer camp. It looks it looks awesome. Like if you have not seen the trailer for this. Oh, my God. If you're a Friday the 13th fan or just slasher fan in general, look into it. It's coming to theaters May 31st. Um, I believe that's around the same time that The Strangers Chapter 1 comes out in theaters, or the same month at the very least. So, we, dude, we have so much. We, we have so much to be excited for this year. 2024 is going to be another um, j just banging year for horror, in my opinion. I'm, I'm very excited. Uh, Makunda Gandhi, what's up, dog? Just saw the notification, the way I rushed to join the live. Thanks for being here. I, I appreciate that. That means a whole lot. That's so sweet. Welcome in, welcome in. Uh, the Field of Screams podcast is saying, yo, 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 my dude. Welcome in, welcome in. Appreciate you. Noah Atkinson is saying, hey, Jake, Scream 7 should be released in theaters May 16th of 2025. That might be a, a good time for it to release. You know, speaking of the rumors I have with that, filming may or may not begin this fall, which I think makes sense with everything that still has to happen. We got to get um, announcements for who the rest of the cast is going to be, uh, where the filming locations are, and, you know, all that fun stuff, which I'm sure we'll get soon. It would make sense if we filmed this in the fall and gave it, like, kind of like a later spring, early summer release date, so somewhere around there. The, the majority of the Scream films, too, correct me if I'm wrong on this, the majority of the Scream films, I believe, were released in spring. Uh, I know one and two were December, I think December of their respective years, but I'm pretty sure, like, the majority of them at least the last three have been um, like springtime or early in the year. So I, I could see that happening. I could see like an earlier, earlier in the year release for this. And also think about Spyglass's release schedule, right? Like if 2025, if they're big like horror releases that year are Scream, uh, Scream 7 and Thanksgiving 2. Well, you know, you're not going to release those back to back. Thanksgiving is obviously going to come out in November of 2025. So you're going to have the other one come out earlier in the year. It just makes sense. It makes sense based off of um, the past releases. It makes sense based off of what else this company is working on. So, Noah, you might not be you might not be too far off, my friend. I think you got it pretty spot on right there. Very interesting. Very interesting. Paula Fitzhenry is here. What's up, Paula? Thanks for being a member. Appreciate you. Welcome, welcome. Rebel Science is here. Hello, hello. Hey, hey, hey. Welcome in. Um, Michael Parton, am I planning to see Ghostbusters Frozen Empire this week? Yes, 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 yes. I'm hoping to do a review of it. I'm not hearing good things, which makes me really sad. Um, I Personally, I found the trailer to be promising. You know, this is this is Ghostbusters, okay? Like, this, this is Ghostbusters Frozen Empire. I'm not expecting this to be, like, you know, a, a very serious horror film that's of upper class and all that bullshit. You know what I mean? No, I'm expecting to just have a, a really goofy, fun time with this movie and nothing else. But I'm hearing negative reviews, which makes me sad. Um, biggest thing I've seen across the board is there's just a lot of nostalgia baiting, which I know my, you know, I, I've complained about it before. It does annoy old Jake sometimes, but I'm hoping it's good. I'm, I'm trying to go into it with... Just cl clearing my head of all the, the reviews I've read. I'm just going to go into it, see what it's all about, try to vibe with it. And if it sucks, it sucks. I hope it doesn't, because I love Ghostbusters so much. And most of the Ghostbusters movies are really good. 
So I'm hoping it's good. I'm very excited to watch it, though. I I have like three reviews to put out this week. Four. No, I, I lied. Four reviews. I, I don't know how I'm going to do it, but I'm going to try. And I'm excited. All, all four of the movies that I'm talking about uh, are, are banging. So uh, King Ben Benji Benja. What's up, dog? How's it going? Killjoy Jake equals cure for boredom. <laughs> God, I, you're going to give me a big head, dog. That's that's <laughs> that's all I'm saying. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thanks for being here. I'm glad you're entertained by my my fast talking lips. Mm. I've not the first time I've said that. That's so gross. Why? OK, ignore that. Louis Tango is saying so curious where Scream 7's timeline will be. I did a video on this a little recently talking about um how it might might take place at the same time as Scream 6. That fixes a lot of issues with where we left off in Scream 6. And the fact that, you know, we got to write the core four out of this thing. Don't think they're coming back, unfortunately. Which makes me sad. It really does. Um, you know, hashtag justice for Melissa Barrera and all that. I, I don't know. I don't know. I think they're not going to do that, though, because... Um, Gail Weathers wouldn't be coming back. And my theory right now is that Spyglass is going to sugarcoat the fuck out of this thing. There's going to be legacy characters out the wazoo, dog. Uh, I, you know, there's another rumor right now that Kirby's not going to return, but I don't know, dog. I think Hayden, I think if they can get Hayden Penetier, she will be back. Um, so my thoughts on this right now is this movie's going to be chocked full of legacy characters and, and every, everything like name, a name, a character who's still alive in the scream universe. Spyglass is actively trying to get them in there or maybe characters who are dead, but are so beloved that, you know, they might just bring them back anyways. So thoughts, lots of thoughts on that. Will you watch Sting, a spider horror film from director of Wormwood? Sure. I love spiders. <laughs> I eat them every day. So why wouldn't I watch movies about them? That sounds awesome. Kyle Brandon is saying, what's up, Jake? What's up? What's up? Oh my God, Kyle. Oh, dude. Yes, I'm going to do this. Uh, are you going to ride the top thrill too at Cedar Point? Me and my girlfriend are planning to do it this summer. We, we've we been talking about it like every every single time we hang out. We're like, we're doing that this summer. We're making it happen. Um, For those who don't know, Cedar Point is like this roller coaster, like amusement park in Ohio. I live very close to it. It's awesome. Like it's like easily my favorite, one of my favorite amusement parks ever. And they took down one of the coolest roller coasters there, the top thrill dragster. And now they've rebuilt it. He's back. <laughs> the fall and now the comeback of the top thrill dragster. And it's even crazier now. You do like this, like you get shot up like this way. I don't even know. They pull you backwards and then you get shot up the thing. It's crazy. It looks horrifying and I'm so going to do it. Like, I, I can't wait. Your boy, <laughs> your boy's an adrenaline junkie. You guys know that, though. So, yes, Kyle, I am so doing that this summer. I will make any whatever I can do to, to be there for sure. Um, want to see? I want to say hi to a few more people. Chan the man is saying I am quite excited for Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice, please tell me the trailer is soon. Should be tomorrow is what I'm hearing. I've, you know, it's weird, man. Um, I heard on Monday that it was going to come out Tuesday. I heard on Tuesday it was going to come out on Wednesday, and now today I'm hearing it's going to come out tomorrow. So are we going to get it tomorrow? I don't, Chan. I don't know, dog. <laughs> I wish I knew. Uh, hopefully this week would be my hopes. But we did get some images today, which are very exciting. So let's throw that up on screen real quick. Because I'm sure you guys are curious if you haven't seen these yet. Here he is, ladies and gentlemen, Beetlejuice. Or sorry, Beetlejuice. That's the porn parody. Beetlejuice here is, is hanging out with us. Love this new image of Michael Keaton. I saw someone say earlier, it just looks like he hasn't skipped a beat. And I couldn't agree more. I mean, he looks just like how he did back in 1988. Love him. I love this green lighting. I, oh, I just, damn. Michael Keaton, what a man. Mm, damn, good stuff there. And then we also got Winona Ryder back in her iconic role, as well as Jenna Ortega as her daughter, Astrid. Lydia and Astrid in on the big screen again. Now, uh, another thing that just got, I don't know if this just got revealed or not, but I'm going to pretend like it did. <laughs> um, Tim Burton has revealed that a death is the reason that all of these characters have gotten back together. Now, I believe there's an obvious choice for who, who has died. Um, a character who will not be returning for the <laughs> for the upcoming sequel, Jeffrey Jones's Charles Dietz. Why might not? He, why would he not be returning? You might ask. Well, he is a pedophile in real life, so I don't believe they they asked him to come back. So probably going to kill off his character, and then everyone comes together and they're like, "Oh, geez, this guy died. Ah, oh, damn." Well, now we're all together again, and Beetlejuice is harassing us. So that's <laughs> that's my guess on uh, 
<laughs> that's my guess on what the plot is going to be for the movie. So I'm I'm very excited. It looks uh, looks like it's going to be fun. That one's coming out on September 6th of this year, just a few weeks after Alien Romulus premieres on August 16th. So we a lot of good movies coming out this year, though, for for real. Oh, my God. My Junkie Jordy, what's going on? Welcome in, welcome in. Thanks for being here, and thanks for being a member, my friend. Appreciate the support. Juicy Fear 2, love the profile picture, dog, is saying, I'm in Australia, and I just watched the Alien trailer. I was jumping in excitement. It actually looks scary. Also, are you still interested in Poo 2? It looks hilarious. I don't know if I can say. I don't know if I can say what what has happened yet, but you know what? Okay, I'm going to say one thing. I have seen Poo 2. I can't say any more than that. Um, that's all I, I that's all I could say. Like I embargo is not lifted. I can't say any more than that. Go see it. Guys, look me in the eyes right now. Go see it. Comes out next week. You will not be disappointed. Go see it. Whew. I'm very interested. I'm I'm very, very, very interested. Okay, that's all. I, I seriously can't an- answer questions about that, so please don't ask. Um, but Michael Bork. Michael Bork? I love that last name. I love last names with Q's in them. Q's, Q is such an interesting letter. Michael is saying, what are the Scream 7 rumors besides Nev and Kevin coming back? Which are both great news, Jake. Oh, it absolutely is, my friend. But uh, biggest rumors right now is that Kirby's not going to return and that there was no plan to bring her back for this upcoming sequel, like, ever. Not at any point. Which, I don't know, man. I don't know if that's true or not. I, I'm kind of... Doesn't really make sense. You know what I mean? Looking at if I'm a production studio and I'm looking at what made Scream 6 so successful, I'm looking at the star power of that film. That's the biggest thing. That's what made that movie get to where it needed to uh, get to where it needed to with the box office. It made more money than the previous film. That's an increase. That's success. That's that screams some good shit right there. So my thoughts are if if I'm making Scream 7, the same company and all that, I'm getting as many people as I possibly can on this project. Now, some people have pointed out that Hayden Panettiere has also posted some some positive stuff for Melissa Barrera, so that might be a reason why she doesn't come back. Because um, you know, Spyglass and Melissa don't exactly have the greatest relationship as of right now. I don't know. I, is that going to be enough? Is that going to be enough to keep someone out of a movie? I don't know. How salty is Spyglass over all this shit? I guess we don't know. But I, if I'm if I'm Spyglass, I'm trying to get as many people into this movie as I possibly can. Is that going to ultimately serve the film? Probably not. But that's one of the big rumors right now, and that also the filming begins this fall. I I also that one I think could happen. That makes a lot of sense to me. I wouldn't be shocked if they started filming this summer. If I'm being honest, they want to they want to get this thing out and going and people talking about it. Yada yada. So we'll we'll see, we'll see. But those are the those are the rumors. Nothing I'm gonna make a video about. I just thought I'd throw it out there. Um. Alien Romulus had a moment that reminded you of Suicide Squad. Oh, I can't say that. Fuck. Um, <laughs> I forgot I can't say that word. Um, that the squad with with the starfish. Interesting. I okay. Hell yeah. I loved some of the shots from the trailer. Um, where is it? This one especially. I, I believe this is Kaylee Spaney, right? Maybe. Uh, yes. I, I <laughs> sh- sure. Looking a lot like Ripley here from from Aliens specifically. Now we know that you know Alien Romulus is going to take place in between the first Alien and the second one, the you know Ridley Scott one, James Cameron movie. My question is: Is this going to be like a brand new story that we're going to tell? Look at Prey. Look at how successful Prey was over on Hulu. Now we're getting a sequel to that, as well as another Predator movie called Badlands. I feel like since this is like the same company doing both of these, we're gonna try to do something similar here with Alien. You know, like get people to love this movie and want more. Bam, we're telling an even grander story now. So I don't think this is gonna be the last Alien movie from Old Fede. If you catch my drift, I really think we're getting more. Um, we'll have to see though. We'll just have to see. All right, let's. I'm gonna try to get. Gonna try to get ahead here because I'm very behind. <laughs> Stupid fizz is with us. What's that? What's that? Blah. Welcome in. Appreciate you. Um, what else is going on? Purge six is titled. Titled is definitely going to be the global purge. Okay. That's interesting. Very interesting. I've heard um I've heard that James DeMonica wants that to be the last one. Which he said that about five, so I don't know. 
I, I was here in talks of that with five and then purge six gets like announced a couple of months after that one came out so i don't, I don't know man i noah who knows <laughs> who knows what's up with that alien romulus seems to be returning back to basics they return to form yes looks very scary um i've seen some people point out that it looks a lot like alien isolation the video game which i've only played a couple of minutes of but it's the scariest video game i've ever played like Jesus Christ. Oh my God. Um, if they capture that energy and something that's a little more familiar, the energy of that original film that is so terrifying, so claustrophobic, so isolating alien isolation. There you go. Um, <laughs> I I'm all about it. I'm, I'm so here for it. I love alien aliens kind of for different reasons too. They're both great movies that are obviously dealing with the same subject matter, continuing one, continuing the story from the previous one. They're both great though, but they are different flavors. Aliens feels a little more like action adventure where the original is just like kind of straightforward commentary based horror film with some crazy sci-fi elements. I love them both. They're both fantastic. And you know, I see a lot of people comparing this to the original alien alien isolation, but this shot right here does give me some aliens vibes. So I don't know. I feel like we're going to have, um, more so a character that's similar to Ripley in aliens versus just alien here in Kaylee Spaney's character. And then we're also going to have the, the more like slow building horror of the original alien with some of our xenomorphy character characters, characters. <laughs> what the fuck? That's not a word dog. <laughs> Um, Austin Daniels is saying people on Instagram aren't happy about Jenna being in Beetlejuice. I get that she's the go-to cast girl, but she's still an actress who needs work. Why are people upset that she's in, in Beetlejuice? I think she's, it's a great new cast option. Are you kidding me? She was in, she was in Wednesday with Tim Burton and now she's in Beetlejuice. That's, that's like one of the best new cast members, I think in the, the whole movie. That's, that's weird. It's weird that people are not, uh, would be upset about that. But, you know, everyone's, I respect everyone's opinion, of course. Um, Talia is asking if I've seen the Nickelodeon documentary. It's super dark, but super interesting on the history of the network. I would definitely recommend. I have not seen it yet. I've heard a lot of people talking about it, though. Um, I don't, unfortunately, I'm just not as familiar with everything that went down. I, I'm aware that Dan, Dan Schneider or whatever did like a, a weird interview or something that people are like, that's fucking strange. Um, so I don't know. I, you know, once again, I, I have, I'm not super familiar in that field, but I would be down to watch that documentary when I have some time for sure. Um, Talia, thanks for being with us tonight, by the way. Appreciate you. I'm saying tonight, every time I go live, it's always late, you know, and it's like, it's like three o'clock. <laughs> So I'm, I'm just kind of, I'm vibing. I'm vibing is what's going on. Welcome in. Happy, good afternoon, everybody. I'll start saying that. There we go. Um, Bluck is saying, if Alien Romulus ends up being a banger, would you like to see Fede connect the universes to hopefully make a banging AVP universe? Dude, yes. I feel like that this is, th this is where this is going. Oh my God. Are, are you kidding me? L listen, they're going to make Prey and Prey, Prey 2, which is probably going to be its own contained little story, but they're also making this movie called Badlands, which is also said to be a period piece with predators. Um, but I feel like it's all going towards some kind of alien versus predator style movie at some point. We got to get a couple of alien movies out there first, obviously, but I think that is where this is all going to uh, culminate to. That, that's, that's my guess as of right now. I would love that personally. I love the first two Alien vs. Predator movies, too. I know that there's not a whole lot of love for Requiem because it's too dark to see. I, fair. There's really cool sequences in that movie, but you just can't see them. So I would love the, another hit at that. Just another another try. Why the hell not? So I'm I'm down. I, I love them both still as they are, but if they want to make another one in the modern day, sure. Cinema's getting weird again, and I, I like that. I, I like when, when movies get, get fucking crazy and strange and, and weird and all that. I, I think the biggest reason for that is just, you know, blockbusters have gotten a little stale. I, I've The majority of American blockbusters I've seen in the last, like, five, five years is maybe a bit of a rough estimate, have just been a little underwhelming. I don't know. There's nothing that really sticks out big time besides, like, Endgame, you know? Uh, there, there's things here and there, obviously. Like, I mean, if we're talking international movies, Godzilla Minus One was so good. Made me come in my pants. What? Just a little bit. <laughs> that was so good. I loved it. Like, that was fantastic. We need more of that. We need more movies like that, Doug. Uh, Makunda is asking, have you seen Baghead? Its trailer looks really interesting. I I have seen the trailer for it. I have not watched it yet. I This came out already, right? Right? Like, to VOD, maybe? 
Baghead was all, it looked sick though. It looked really interesting, very um, inventive with its premise. But I have not watched it yet. Um, I will I will try to give it a watch as soon as possible, my friend. I'm trying to see more horror movies this year. I only got to a couple in 2023. Moser movie reviews. What's up? What's up, dog? Welcome in. Welcome in. Thanks for being here, Chase. Appreciate you. We're talking a little bit about Alien Romulus, Beaglejuice too. I like to call it Beaglejuice. I just think that's funny. We uh, we also hit on some Scream 7 rumors and In a Violent Nature, a movie I'm very excited about as well. So if you have any questions about any of that stuff, throw it out there. Throw it out in the world and we'll get to it. Moser's saying, I actually changed the filter on my TV and I can see everything in AVP Requiem perfectly. I love that movie. See, that's what you got to do. Like, there's a lot of people that just haven't done that and that's why they hate the movie. I also, dude, I turned up the brightness one time and I'm like, ooh, okay, this is pretty good. <laughs> this is pretty sick. So, no, I, I feel you. I, I feel you, man. I like it. Requiem, I, I personally really enjoy, but I get why some people don't like it. Bluck is saying Fast X with Dante... Oh man, I'm I, I'm I'm gonna sound so stupid, but I don't know what that is. Anything with Fast X in it, though, <laughs> you know I'm here for it, Blucka. Haven't liked the first two AVP movies. Uh, just seem to like my Aliens and Predators separate. <laughs> Fair enough, man. Um, you know, for me personally, they're they're guilty pleasure films. You know what I mean? Like I don't I'm not out here saying like these are oh these are masterpieces. Throw them at, at the Oscars or anything. They're just fun. They're they're fun goofy movies. I enjoy the AVP movies for the same reason I enjoy Freddy vs Jason. You know, it's just here is um the 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 pinnacle of fan fiction of these two beloved sci-fi entities coming together coming together to fight each other for whatever fucking reason. I don't care. I just want to see Predator fight an alien. That's kind of where I'm. I, that's kind of my mindset with those movies. That's I, you know, turn your brain off, have fun. That's that's where I'm at with, with those. But I I don't know. I'm I'm here for another one. I'm I'm also here for the respective franchises taking themselves a little more seriously. But then when we come together, things get campy and goofy. I think that's fun. You get to hit all sides of the spectrum with what makes the make these movies so great. Uh, Prey was very, very straightforward, like has some scary moments, has some great character development. It's awesome. But then you have like an alien Romulus, I feel like is going to be the same thing. It's going to be very slow and, you know, tension building, horrifying movie. But then if we do get a, a versus movie, it's just going to be that it's just going to be fucking around. It's just going to be fun. Um, I'm here for it, though. Uh, do you like or love found footage horror? I do. I have visited the the Hell House, Butterfly Kisses, and TPWP locations last summer. I'm like, oh, I should know that. I feel like I should totally know that. I have seen Hell House, though. I love, I really love the first Hell House, and I really like the new one that was like kind of a prequel. Kind of, but also kind of not. It's It's both at the same time. I, lo I love, love those movies. Those are fun. The, the second and the third one, I don't know. But uh, the first one and the new one were very cool. Uh, in terms of found footage, I, I, I love it. I think it's great. Cryptic found footage is always my favorite where it's just like um, the stuff where it's a little less explained. I, I've always found that to be more intriguing. I love the idea of, of just a good mystery in a found footage horror. I think those are my, th those tend to be my favorites. Uh, you know, like the VHS franchise hits on that a lot. Um... As Above, So Below is one of my favorites. The the Wreck Record franchise, whatever you want to call it. Love those to death. But that's banging, dude. I'm glad you got to go to so many cool locations. I, I'm trying to get out to um, the Exorcist stairs this year. I, I wanted to make a, a video on that at some point. That's that's all, the, all out in D.C., though. I'm not, like, too far. It's not too far of a drive for me up here in Cleveland. So I'm like, I, I should try to hit that. Try to make that happen. I wanted to go to California and do, you know, go to the like Stu Mocker's house and all that. But that's, you know, that's going to be a whole trip. That's going to be a whole thing. But I'm getting to it, making it happen. Um, what else is going on? Oh, you just, <laughs> you, you got a screener for Baghead? Dude, hell yeah, man. I thank you. Thank you so much, Eric. I appreciate that. I, I'm going to get to that. I'm going to get to that as soon as possible. Um, I, yeah, old Jake is, um has been crazy busy, but I, I I would love to watch that one early. I, the trailer blew me away. This is another movie, too, If ladies and gentlemen, if you're like, oh, I need another good, something else that looks good. You know, if there's something else you want to be excited about, look at the trailer for Baghead. This one was intriguing. This was one I feel like could be good. I'm not sure. You know, I haven't seen it yet. Don't have an opinion quite yet, but it looks like it's going to be fun, man. 
looks like it's going to be a good time. Uh, when will you do a review for Ghostbusters Frozen Empire? So here's the thing. I have three movies. Okay, sorry. I keep saying that. Three movies are coming out this weekend, but I have four movies to review. So Ghostbusters Frozen Empire and Immaculate I'm seeing tomorrow night. And then I'm also seeing Late Night with the Devil at some point. What do you guys want first from all, from those three specifically? Because I, I'm hearing bad things about Ghostbusters. I still want to review it. I don't care. Um, I'm going to get that out. But I, I don't know what to review first. What's the thing that is the most pressing? What do you guys want to review on as soon as possible? Because I, I, I kind of want to prioritize like one movie and then kind of do the others like at some point Friday. I'll get like something out Thursday night, try to do something like two videos on Friday for the other reviews. Late Night with the Devil. Okay. Okay. I'm seeing that. Late Night with the Devil from Amy and Juicy. Immaculate seems really cool. I'm, I'm very excited for that one. Looks good. Not a big Ghostbusters fan, TBH. It's all good. Bustin' does not make you feel good. That's all good. <laughs> Late night with the devil. Cool, cool. Ghostbusters should be first. Okay. I'm seeing I'm seeing a lot of love for, for, for Ghostbusters and Late Night with the Devil. So I, I might prioritize might prioritize those two. Because that, that might make the most sense. I'm I'm really I'm really hyped for pretty much everything we got coming out this weekend. Damn, we got we got it's nonstop. Like it's pretty much nonstop for the rest of the year. I was saying that on, on another stream, but for like every two weeks moving on, like there's going to be something big in theaters that I'm excited for. And that's, that's rare, man. That's, that's rare. That doesn't happen a whole lot. So I, I don't know. It's, it's going to be an interesting year, man. We're going to get some stinkers of course, cause that's just inevitable, but I'm hoping that mostly everything's good. Immaculate. Okay. Late night with the devil. Bustin makes you feel good. Okay. <laughs> Good. <laughs> that's, that's good to hear. Uh, <laughs> uh, Shay Rance is here saying, hey, Jake, how's it how's it going? Been a while since I caught one of your streams. What are your thoughts on the new Alien trailer? Dude, it bangs. It absolutely bangs. I uh, Hang on. Hang on, dog. I got to get my, my death lemonade here. Mm. My thoughts are I, I loved the trailer, how they set everything up. I don't feel like it spoiled too much. There's like one shot of a character getting face hugged, and that was kind of like, okay, well... I could have done without that. But besides that, everything else looks badass. Um, very excited for it. It's it's very brutal. I don't feel like it really... Like, look, that one comment aside, I really don't feel like it gave too much away. I loved seeing the bloody hallway in the spaceship. That gives me a lot of faith that this is going to be just ge a genuine horror film. You know, a genuine horror film where it's gonna be scary it's gonna be it's gonna be fucking crazy and that's what i want that's what i want from alien at this point i, f I watch you know prometheus and, and covenant and they just come off as like here's all this lore dumping about where the aliens came from and i'm like i respect it ridley scott but i don't care like i, <laughs> I just did not care about those movies that much man they, they just weren't as uh they weren't as exciting they were just trying to world build and like get in get out world building that's it and I was just kind of like, ah, man, they're, they're, they're gorgeous films. Like, don't get me wrong. They're shot really well. They performed really well. But just overall concept in general, they just did not hold my attention, unfortunately. Um, and I've just had, I've had no interest of going back and rewatching those. So I feel like it, this one specifically, Romulus, is going to get back to what makes Alien so great, especially in those first two movies, which is just aliens eating people, rip, ripping them to shreds, and we're fighting them. We're, <laughs> we're shooting them with the, the big, like, laser guns and all that. That's what I want, man. That's what I'm really hoping for. But, Shay, it looks great. I'm very excited for it, man. Uh, Piranha 3D is amazing. I don't care. I, I, I'm 100% with you, dude. That, movie's, that movie is amazing. So good. Old school, you didn't like Lisa Frankenstein. Oh, man, that was my favorite horror movie of the year uh, that I've seen thus far. That I can tell you about. <laughs> El Dante is with us tonight as well. What's up? What's up? How's it going? Uh, hey, Jake. Great to see you at this earlier time. Hell yeah, dog. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. I'm busy, but I'm good. <laughs> I don't. I unfortunately did not have time to edit a video about all this fun stuff today. So we're live and we're talking about all this crazy shit. It's exciting stuff, man. El Dante, welcome in. Thanks for being a member, dude. Appreciate you. DJ Plays Favorites is also here. Thank you. Thank you. Saying, wow, an update and more. You're damn right. You're damn right. We got a bunch of updates. It's it's exciting. Paula, throw your question out there, my friend. Unfortunately, I, I missed some stuff because I had to catch up. I can only do so many questions at a time. But th if you throw it out there again, I, I will get to it. I promise, Paula. I'm so sorry. 
How about The Watchers? Oh, that's the one from uh, um, M. Night Shyamalan's daughter, right? I'm, I'm very excited for that. That looks good. I did not have time to cover that one, but it looks sick, and I'm excited for it. Looks, looks like it's going to be fun. I, I wasn't... I, I will say, like, thinking about it now, I'm like, I don't remember the trailer all that vividly. I remember something... It was like a trailer or something came out for it. I don't remember it all that vividly, but I remember being like, oh, this looks cool. Hell yeah. So there is that. <laughs> El Dante has been a member for two months. See Jake live. Click like sub. Hide behind sofa. <laughs> what? <laughs> Why are you hiding behind the sofa? Are you like just getting in there, making everything happen, and then just like dolphin diving behind a sofa? He can't see me now. I've supported his page. I see you, El Dante. I see you behind the sofa, dog. No, I'm just, I'm just fucking with you. Uh, th thanks for the support, man. I appreciate you. Two whole months of being part of the cult means a whole lot, man. Sip up on that cold, uh, the cold Kool-Aid, and enjoy it. There's nothing else in there, my friend. I promise. <laughs> ID IDK is saying TBH Prometheus didn't explain anything. I mean, it kind of gives you the origins for with the xenomorphs, kind of, you know, and then that's expanded upon in Covenant. But like, I just. I kind of don't care, you know? I don't, I, I don't like, I guess I don't love movies where the only purpose of them is to explain something that happened in another movie. And there's a lot of those. There's a lot of those these days. And Prometheus and Covenant, that's kind of, that's why they exist. And I'm just like, kind of just took the fun out of it, in my opinion. I like, I like the mystery. I like dissecting it. I, I guess I just don't like necessarily getting an answer because then that conversation's over. You know, that, that conversation is over when you finally do get a, uh, a completely painted answer for stuff. And I'm just kind of like, I'm watching Prometheus, I'm watching Alien Covenant, and I'm just like, okay, that's it. You know, there's, there's nothing to talk about after that movie. It's like, once you've seen it, you've seen it, it's over. So I don't know, I guess that's why I'm just not, I, I have no reason to go back, you know? I just don't have, a, don't have a reason to go back. The Blair Witch Project, thank you. Uh, TBWP. I, my, you know, my brain's not working all too good. That's why I got the, the caffeinated lemonade. <laughs> But I'm trying. Thank you so much, Eric. I appreciate that. <laughs> Paula, I'm looking for your question, dog. I'm looking for it. I don't see it, though. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to get to it. What else we got here? Aiden is saying, explaining how the aliens exist just ruins so much of the mystery. I just pretend Prometheus and Covenant aren't canon. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you, Aiden. I it's just not as fun, you know what I mean? I, it's it's so much more scarier to just find that in a broken down alien spaceship. I'm like, what? It's like, what is this? Maybe it's you know something from a lost culture that got overran overran by you know whatever the fuck created it. And I guess that is kind of what happened. But I I didn't need I didn't need that confirmed. You know, I I didn't need that confirmed. I just wanted to, I just like the setup of a good mystery, man. But maybe that's just me. Do you think Terrifier Three has stopped filming? Asks I Cameron. You know, it's a good question. I remember hearing a, a couple of months, not a couple of months ago. This was more than that. I want to say like September is when I, I heard that they were going to be filming from like bottom of Jan January to like the beginning ish of of this month. And they're still filming now. So I don't know. I, I really I really not, am not 100 percent sure. I, I heard it was going to be like a, a just a month long production, but they're still going. So my guess is they're probably going to they're probably going to keep filming for a little while and then it's going to be over come April. But I don't know. I just my thoughts on it. That's a great question, I Cameron, because we we've kind of had some conflicting reports recently, so I'm not not 100% on that. Fast X uh frustrated you. Didn't uh, know there was a sequel, so when the end came, it was more of a huh? <laughs> Dude, there's a part there's apparently going to be a part two and a part three. Uh, for those who don't know, for those who are joining us for the first time, I am a huge fan of Fast X. I think it is the goofiest movie I've ever paid money to see in the theaters, so I bring it up a lot. I I, I just don't understand how a movie like that gets made. I'm still uh, perplexed by it. I think it's insane. It is both a masterpiece and a disaster at the same time. It's, uh, it's just one of those outliers of film. Nothing will ever be like Fast X again. It doesn't make any sense. It's, it's brilliant all at the same time. It's just, there's so much to it. <laughs> there's, there's so much I could dissect with Fast X. I, I loved it. I was crying laughing within the first 20 minutes of that movie. It's so good, man. So good. Bubble Pirate. What's up, Bubble Pirate? Do you think uh, someone, Gale should die? In Scream 7, as you said a little later on. I don't know, man. I 
do I think she should die? I guess it doesn't really matter what I think because, you know, Spyglass is going to play this one safe, dude. Like, what I think is going to happen is Spyglass is going to play this movie so safe, it is going to be triumphant and happy, and they're going to take down Ghostface way too easy. Like, I feel like that's going to be the vibe of this movie, especially after everything that's happened. I think that Spyglass is going to put their tail between their legs <laughs> and hide in the corner and pray that people like their seventh movie. Or, sorry, not that people will like it. Pray that people will go to see it and then they can get money from it. So my guess is, no, they're not going to kill any of the legacy characters. Hell, there's probably not even going to be that many deaths. They just want happiness. Happy movie. Please come see our, our film. D dear God. So, so no, I don't think Gail's going to die. I don't think Sydney's going to die. I don't think Mark's going to die. I think everyone's going to live and it's going to be a happy ending and take that how you will. If that's something you want from Scream 7, hey, all the power to you. But, you know, I, th they're horror films at the end of the day. I, not everything, I, I don't think everything should be so, so happy and wrapped up nice and neat in a bow. In, interim, interim, -vene. what's up, dog? How's it going? <laughs> hi, 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 hi. Welcome, welcome. Kevin Ramos is saying Beetlejuice looks fucking awesome in the new film. Yes, he does, Kevin. We put we put this up earlier, but we got some new people hanging out with us tonight. Got some new pictures from Beetlejuice, too. He looks awesome in that lighting. Tell you what, very excited for this movie. Looks like it's going to be a lot of fun. We also got this brand new image of Lydia and Astrid Dietz. So I, I think that's going to be really cool. I'm, I'm very excited. This, this looks uh, to be a beginning scene from the movie as well because as we learned from director tim burton it's going to start with the death of a family member who i believe is going to be jeffrey jones's character charles deets who is obviously not coming back for the film because he's a, a pedo yeah Ugh. i know right that's that's upsetting so he's not going to come back <laughs> he's definitely not going to come back so i imagine they're going to kill off his character I'm, but I'm excited, man. Beetlejuice 2, it looks fun. Tim Burton movies, I'm, I'm usually a pretty big fan of. So I think, think this, this one is going to be fun. Paul is saying, see you on the next stream. Who knows? Maybe one of the holdovers could join Scream 7. You never know. You never know. I hope so. I hope so, Paula. Uh, thank you for being here, Paula. I appreciate it. I heard that you're going to get some dinner. So hope <laughs> enjoy that. Sorry I didn't get to your question. I, will, I promise I'll get to it next time, Paula. Thanks for being here. Appreciate you. Uh, Noah's excited for Mission Impossible 8. I'm excited. I, I'm, I'm hyped for that, too. I still haven't seen part one, but I love the Mission Impossible movies. Still haven't seen that, the newest one. I don't, I just, it just flew under the radar for me, for me. No, I don't know how that happened. But I'm getting to it. Getting to it when I can. Zafrier is saying disaster piece. Are we talking about they follows? They they, they fall. It's not they follows. They follow. They swallow. Ooh. Oh shit. That's a porn parody. There we go. See. Ah. Ah. We found it. Um. Yes. They follow. A movie I'm very excited for. The It Follows continuation. I'm I'm worried that this movie is going to try to explain what it is, and I don't. Once again, another movie where I'm like, I don't need an explanation. The situation's too cool. I don't. I don't need a 100 of what it's going to be. But um. Very excited for that movie, and if Disaster Piece doesn't do the music, I don't, like, I almost don't want to see it. Like, I'm almost at that point, where the original It Follows is so good for so many reasons, but one of the biggest reasons is that soundtrack is banging. It is one of my all-time favorite scores for a movie, like, beyond just the realm of horror. It's just one of my favorites. I listen to it all the time. I'm obsessed with it. Disaster Piece, I don't know what you're doing, dog. But you better be hitting up the It Follows people, or they better be hitting up you, I should say. Dear God. Dear God, someone make that phone call right now, if it hasn't already happened. Um, uh, what is what, what are, I need some good questions here. I need some good questions. Let's see what we got here. Juicy Fear is saying, Piranha 3D thoughts. It's amazing and hilarious. Oh, yeah, I forgot about 3DD. <laughs> also, very hilarious. I, I saw Piranha 3D in theaters when it came out. Now, I believe this movie is like an early 2010s or a late thousands movie. So I was very young and my folks did not know that it was going to be filled with boobs, blood and gore. <laughs> so I, I saw a lot of firsts that night. <laughs> let's, let's just say that. Um, and it, I, I just loved it. I thought it was such an interesting movie. It was so it was so disturbing especially in that third act when all the spring breakers just get ripped to shreds by the piranhas that like it was the first time I was just genuinely upset 
by a horror movie. Like I was just so upset by it. I was like, oh my God. So to this day, it is a movie that I watch every summer. Like it's just very near and dear to my heart. The first time I was just really upset by a horror movie that one that just really, really pushed the, um, Push, push it past the the line of what is okay. What well, was this movie for me personally? So, I love it. It's a really fun movie. So why I've not been here lately? But good. Oh yeah, yeah. You you were busy, right, my friend? I think you were saying you you got busy with work. This is my first time back since starting work. It's good stuff. Not high level as was out of work for a few years, but good to get back to work and plan for a bigger future. Go, I, listen, man, you, you got to start somewhere. You know, you got you got to start somewhere. You got to make it happen where you can. So it's all good. It's all it's all good. I hope you're getting everything figured out, man. And and thanks for stopping in. Thanks for stopping into the into the live, dude. It's all. I listen. I get it. You know, not everyone can make it to all the streams, and that's all good. I. All that matters to me. I'm. I just, you know, I just appreciate you stopping by and saying hey, and it, it just means a lot. It means a lot you coming in here and, and saying hello. So thank you. Thanks for being in. I hope everything's going good with work, my friend. And stop on by the streams whenever you can. I'm gonna try to do. My goal is to do like three a week, but that's that's uh, easier said than done. Martha should honestly be the opening kill for Scream Seven. Perfect way to bring in the twins. <sighs> I just, I don't know if I want to see the twins without the Carpenter sisters. I think that's my only thing. Like, I have nothing against the twins. I just, I feel like after we we made this big point in in Scream 6, the, the core four is this unit. I just feel like it would be so weird if we only had half of them <laughs> and not the other two. I just, the whole time I would be thinking to myself, where is Sam and Tara, you know? And it's, well, where are they? They're off to better things, apparently. So, I, I don't know, man. I just... I'm I'm not against that, you know, if they get the call and they're in it, cool. Hell yeah. But I would just it would be weird. It would be weird after everything we set up in six with, with those characters. I, I would want all of them together in, in one big movie. And hopefully both of them can actually make it to the third act this time around and and, and do something and not just lay on the ground getting stabbed. <laughs> that that would be cool. I Cameron is asking, what are your most anticipated horror films of 2024? Mine are Abigail and Terrifier 3. Oh, those are up there for me as well. Terrifier 3 is at the top of my list because, of course, it is. Alien Romulus is up there. The Wolfman from Blumhouse is up there. Abigail's up there. Yeah, Abigail is definitely up there, too. I'm very excited for that. But I do I do believe we're going to have some some big surprises this year. Like, Late Night with the Devil looks like a big surprise. I, I think this movie's going to fucking bang. Um, this movie comes out this week, and the trailer is very intriguing. It looks like it's going to be a very experimental horror film takes place across like an entire live broadcast where they're trying to summon the devil or something like that. I don't know. I'm kind of, I not going to lie. That's one I haven't done too much reading about because I want to go into it blind. I've heard very good things about early, early screenings. And I want to be, there are some things I still want to be shocked and surprised by. So that is one that I, I really have been staying away from because I want to just go into it as blind as I possibly can. But I'm very excited for that movie, dude. Uh, there are, there's a lot of good stuff coming out this year. I'm, I'm actually, I'm at the point already where I know we started this year rough. Night Swim, Founder's Day, Imaginary. We had some, we had some stinkers out the gate in 2024. But I, I really think that the rest of this year is going to be fucking awesome. <laughs> the rest of this year is going to be fucking awesome in terms of movies. And I don't know, I think this could be an even better year for horror than last year. So I'm very excited. I'm very excited to see what the rest of this year holds. NN Squad with a dope picture of a dog. Love it. What's going on, dog? Saying any news on Red Right Hand 2? Uh, no. <laughs> no, there's no news on Red Right Hand 2, dog. I, I am working on a short film. I can't say any more than that. What I, what I will give you, though, is that if you're a supporter of the page, there's two updates available on what the short film is going to be all about. So my supporters know, and they know to keep quiet on it as well. So uh, go check out the updates if you want to hear what I have to say about the next thing we're working on. Because it's exciting. It's an exciting time, let me tell you. I think this year, this year is going to be the best year for this channel ever. Very excited. J3 Jigsaw 13 LV is saying, if Art the Clown offs a kid and shows it, that's ballsy. He killed two kids in All Hallows Eve, but only showed the aftermath. Yeah, I mean, it's it's not only is it ballsy, but, you know, a lot of people are already pissed about that potentially happening. Here's the thing, right? They, te they teased that in the teaser. They did. 
it's it's gonna happen. I don't know if it's gonna be more tasteful or if it's gonna be you know just in your face when it happens. But I feel like it's kind of inevitable at that point. Like, why would they put that in the teaser and then not deliver on that? You know what I mean? I mean, they th this franchise is all about um, this franchise is all about pushing the pushing the limits, making things happen, making things happen that probably wouldn't happen in a typical big budget release of a slasher. So I think they're going to go there. And I know, I, I know, you know, some people are hearing this and they're like, Jake, that's just too far, man. Like, that's just, that's too much. They, but my argument with this is they were saying the same thing back when the exorcist came out. That's too far. You can't show a little girl doing this and that or whatever. And that's what horror exists for. It exists for many reasons, but one of those things is to push boundaries and to make people feel uncomfortable for whatever reason. So I don't know, man, I'm, I'm personally not against limiting a creator. I guess is where I'm at with it. I'm, I'm not like, oh, that needs to happen in Terrifier 3. It doesn't. But if that's where Damien Leone wants to take it, I'm here for it, man. I'm, I'm here for it. It's going to push boundaries. It's going to be upsetting. It's going to be fucked up. And frankly, that's kind of what I want from a Terrifier film. I don't want them to, you know, take it so far and then just kind of be like, ah, uh, okay. All right. That's that's where we're going to, we're going to, we're going to, uh, where we're going to leave it. Sorry. But I don't know. I'm, I'm excited to see them push boundaries in Terrifier 3. However they end up doing that, you know, still up to... We'll still have to see. But regardless, I'm excited. Nemo Mark is with us tonight. What's up, Nemo? Saying Alien Romulus, going to be good? Gore in space. No one will hear you scream. Ooh. Dude, I'm so excited, man. This movie's gonna bang. That that trailer was so good, and it's it's so easy to make a good trailer. It is, but people don't do them nowadays. Everyone's like, let's get a top 40 song in there. Let's show you the entire movie, how the plot's gonna run, and bam, that's a trailer. No, it's not, dog. No, no you're basically spoiling the whole thing. Don't do that. <laughs> I remember like around like the late thousands, we started doing trailers like that and it's only gotten worse, but slowly, slowly, but surely it is getting better with trailers. Um, this is a, a good testament to that as well. Th this trailer did not give that much away. We did get to see a character get face hugged, which pretty much solidifies their fate. But besides that, it's a very mysterious trailer. It, it asks a lot of questions. I feel like it's building a lot of questions in my brain. Some of those things are, you know, why is there such a young crew on this spaceship that's, you know, going after what, what is here? Let me read you the plot synopsis because this, this is really interesting. I, I, I found this to be intriguing to say the least. While scavenging the deep ends of a derelict space station, a group of young space colonizers come face to face with the most terrifying life form in the universe. So it's kind of going to be like aliens in the, in the sense of the, like, having the same setup, but I think it's going to feel, have the same tone as something more like the original Alien from Ridley Scott, which has me unbelievably excited, Nemo. I'm, I think it's gonna be really fun. It's gonna be kind of feeling like a mashup of those two films, maybe best of both worlds. Because as, as I was saying earlier, Alien and Aliens, while yes, they are in the same franchise, two different brilliant directors and two totally different feels and tones to them. So I'm, I'm really excited to see what they end up, what we end up getting from this. Blucka is saying It Follows didn't need a sequel, just like Smile didn't need one. Damn, Blucka. Blucka, Blucka did not like Smile. And I respect it. I get it. I enjoyed Smile. I thought it was fun. But I, Blucka, I am kind of with you, man. I don't know if It Follows needs a sequel, but I'm going to give this one a chance. It's the same guy that did the first one, David Robert Mitchell. So maybe, maybe it's good, you know? If it if it does the over-explaining nonsense just because just because we wanted to make a sequel, well, then I'm going to be sad. Then I'm going to fucking cry. And then I'm going to be like, Why? Why would you ruin one of my favorite mysteries in all of horror? Damn. But if you have if you have not seen It Follows, I couldn't recommend it more. It's it's a top ten horror movie of all time for me personally. Uh, Rebel Science is saying, "Are you excited about the Alien TV show? Just wondering how they can stretch the Alien story uh, and, and top many episodes, seasons. What can it be about?" I'm I'm excited for it. Uh, oh, who was the guy that was show running it? For the life of me, I can't remember. I cover too much shit on this page, man. <laughs> I want to cover more, and then I'm like, I can't even cover the shit I'm covering, dude. Um, no, but I'm I'm excited for it. Looks like it's gonna be fun. I I've heard mostly good things. Mostly, I I think I'm much more excited for this movie though. I think that's kind of where where my thoughts where, where where my headspace is with Alien at the moment. You know, TV shows at least in my opinion, recently, that are based off of, like, movie IPs, I just haven't been super impressed with. Uh, really, the only one that even remotely 
kind of blew me away was the Evil Dead show, and that got canceled, which I still don't understand why. It was easily the best out of any of the horror-based TV I think we've had in the last, like, 10 years or so. But I, I don't know, man. I'm... I'm scared. Anytime that this happens, I'm just usually not a big fan of it. I don't know what it is. Like, I don't know. I don't know if it's just like horror doesn't translate well to TV, like for me at least. But there's a lot of like shows based off of IPs where I'm just like, I'm just not a fan of this. I love these movies, but this show just is is not the same. It's just not doing doing it for me. So I I will check this one out, though. I mean, that's literally that's not a criticism of the show. I mean, that's just me saying what my experience with horror television has been recently. I'm, sh I'm sure the show could be great, you know? And that'd be great. That'd be awesome. Ryan is with us tonight. What's up, Ryan? How's it going? What's up, what's up? Have I talked to Alien Romulus yet? We kind of just talked about it a little bit, but if you got any questions, man, throw it out there. If you saw something in the trailer where you're like, oh my God, Jake, check this out. <laughs> throw it out there, man. We'll, we'll talk a bit about it. Garrett's uh, saying, don't forget about Maxine. You got a really good point. Garrett, I think that's going to be a banger, too. This is going to be a hard top 10 list to do for 2024, man. I'll tell you what. Um, last year's was very difficult. This year, I think, is going to be even more difficult, dude. Fuck. We got Maxine. We got Alien Romulus. We got Wolfman. We got Terrifier 3. We got Abigail. We got everything coming out this weekend, which some of it looks really promising. Fuck, dude. I'm overwhelmed, Garrett. I'm overwhelmed. So much good media coming. I can't wait for it all. Can't wait for it all. Uh, what, what else is going there? You must check out the trailer for the Glenarma tapes. It's a found footage movie that you will love. I'm going to write that down. I, I need a good found footage watch, dude. I was just saying the other day, I'm like, I want to, whatever the next project I do, which is going to be far down the line, Jake needs a break. Um, <laughs> I want to, I want to do found footage. So I want to start watching some more, uh, deeper cut found footage stuff. Cause I've, I've seen all the hits, like name a big horror movie. That's found footage. I've seen it. Um, one of my favorite subgenres, personally. But I want to start watching some of the more weirder ones, which I've I have cracked into a little bit in the last year or so. The this movie called um actually we watched this in 2021. One of my favorite found footage horror movies that was a big inspiration for Red Right Hand is a movie called Be My Cat, a film for Anne, which is one of the most disturbing movies I've ever seen. It's so low budget, but it's done so well. I, I fucking loved it. Um it's really gross. It's really gross. It's really interesting. I, I don't even know what I want to tell you about it. Like, it's such a good movie to watch blind because nothing can prepare you for some of the uncomfortable moments of that film. Uh, so so give that a watch. Glenarma tapes. Gl Glen Arma. I don't I don't know what that you know, I don't know what that is either, but I'm, <laughs> I'm going to watch this and probably find out rebel science. I'm, I'm going to watch that. Sounds awesome. Uh, and, and Makunda Gandhi. Yes. Stop motion. Another movie I need to watch that I've heard very good things about. Fuck, there's so many movies, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> oh, man, I, I don't even know. I don't know how I can get to all of them. But this one I've heard very good things about. Very, very, very good things um, from some of my friends and trusted critics have praised this one. So stop motion looks dope. Rank all the openings and screams one through six. Dude, I made a whole video about that, Bubble Pirate. But off the top of my head, um, I mean... Uh, I got I got some weird takes on the openings to Scream. The, in my opinion, the most overwhelm not overwhelming the the most impressive opening from the Scream franchise is six. I just love it. It's so much fun. Um, it's so near and dear to my heart. That's just personal opinion. Is it like the best directed or written? I don't know about that, but but it's up. There. That's my personal favorite. I love it. I would probably put two's opening after that. The first opening after that, third place because the, the the original movie's opening is iconic. Ah, uh, uh, six, the, the six, two, and one are like the holy grails. The rest of them are kind of just whatever, in my opinion. But I would probably put four after that. Fours is like at least pretty experimental, stands out a lot. Five under that, and then three at the bottom. Because threes isn't bad. It's just I don't know. It's just not. It's not my favorite. My favorite part of the opening to three is the Creed song. <laughs> that that is my favorite part of Screen Three's opening. Uh, Chris is saying, hey, Jake, any idea when we will get a Nosferatu trailer? Probably not till way later this year. Well, I mean, not way later. We're in like we're in like the end of quarter one of 2024. We'll, we'll probably get a trailer for that come this fall is my guess, because that one's coming out on Christmas this year, uh, December 25th. So I, I don't think we'll get a trailer for that soon, but definitely later on in the year. That's usually when we start to promote, you know, um, winter films just in general is like top of fall 
time, you know, when summer is officially over, the leaves are starting to change. That kind of time period. Just to overwhelm you some more, Robert Eggers, Nosferatu. That's probably going to make my top 10 too, man. Robert Eggers does not miss. Um, all three of his movies so far have been fucking banging. Hybrid Gamer, what's up, dog? How's it going? Saying huge fan here. Thank you so much. With a question, what do you think of a Jill versus Sam movie? I feel like they'd make good adversaries and Jill's death would be easy to retcon. Just bring her back to life with more electricity, dog. Come on now. <laughs> I, you know, honestly, man, I'm at this point where Scream 7 could bring back anybody. I think they're they're that desperate. Hot take. I, I don't think that, you know, Jill's a bad character or anything like that. I just feel like, you know, she's she's dead. She'll leave her in her movie and, and that's it. Let's let's move on to some other characters. Let's give some other people a chance to be Ghostface or be our new, um, a, a brand new protagonist we love. Something like that. I'm here for it, though. I'm here for Sam fighting some other ghost faces. That that would be so much fun. I'm hoping for that in Scream 8, personally, under a different studio umbrella. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed, baby. Ho hoping that happens. I think if Sam and Jill were to fight, though, that would be so fucking awesome, and I would love to see that timeline where that could potentially happen because that would that would have been sick. Sam in, in Scream 4 would be sweet. Sam is a great character, uh, easily one of my favorite Scream characters for sure. So, uh, one of you know one of my favorite Scream protagonists versus one of my favorite antagonists, protagonist antagonist fighting each other. It's awesome. I love that shit. So that, that would be sick. We know Sam was in Woodsboro during the events of Scream 4. So there is that. Maybe they did fight at one point. Maybe there's a little flashback to that. Um, Final Destination six. Are we getting a trailer for that? I uh, I know they started filming recently, so we probably won't get a trailer for that. I mean, at the earliest, maybe late this year. Um, I, I is this one coming out next year or 2026? I can't cannot remember off the top of my head. I remember there was some like speculation on when a release date was for this movie, but I know they're filming it now, and I'm excited for it, man. The Final Destination movies, another franchise where it's just like a lot of fun. Just, just a lot of fun from start to finish. I don't know if any of those movies, once again, are, you know, masterpieces or anything like that, but uh, very fun, very creative with the kills. And the opening scene to Final Destination 2 will forever be the reason why I just don't drive behind trucks with logs. Fuck that. <laughs> Not going to do it. <laughs> Not going to happen, bro. <laughs> uh, Juicy Fear 2 is saying going to sleep now by Jakey Boy. I had a nightmare about Jaws last night. <laughs> What an ominous way to leave. Um, don't have a nightmare tonight, my friend. Don't do that. Dear God, be careful. <laughs> be careful out there. Have good dreams. Vedant, Vedant Sax Saxena? Maybe? Am I close? Welcome in, my friend. Hey, Jake. Jill versus Sam Carpenter. Oh, man, we, we're really on this. Um, who do you like more? We just talked about this, my friend. That's really funny. Um... Which one do I like more? That's so tough. I think Sam is more character development, so I'm a little more interested in her as a character, but Jill is one of my favorite ghost phases. I think she's awesome. Yeah, she Her motive is so lemon-scented evil. That's, Scream 4 is one of, like, that's one of the most upsetting ghost face reveals. That's maybe my favorite ghost face reveal in the whole franchise, just because of how how well done it is. Um, it's so shocking. The first time I saw it, it blew my fucking mind. Easily one of the the best uh, reveals in the whole franchise for me personally. And I just love her motive. I think it's, it's very inventive. It's a great motive for the commentary of that film. Kevin Will Williamson knew what he was doing with that with that entry, in my opinion. I love four. Four fucks. <laughs> four absolutely fucks. Jill is a great ghost face. Sam is one of my favorite um, main characters. So it's tough to say. It's I think they both have their strengths and weaknesses, but they are similar characters in the sense of, um, like, I guess, intensity, if that makes sense. Like, Sam's going to stab the shit out of you if you fuck with her. Jill is also going to do that, but for all the wrong reasons. <laughs> So it's interesting. They're they're interesting characters to compare and contrast. I think they lie on different ends of the spectrum of um, uh, what their motives are. Obviously, if that makes sense. But but I love them both. They're both really good characters. Uh, Terrifier two or Evil Dead Rise? That's a good question. Um, I, I think I gotta go with Terrifier 2. I just like that one so much. It's so near and dear to my heart. Probably my favorite slasher film of all time. I've seen it so many times. Evil Dead Rise, though, also very close 
to this little organ in my chest because I got to see that one super early and Bruce Campbell was there when I watched it, which is crazy. Awesome. Oh, I just got a, I just got a crazy, I'm getting crazy emails left and right this week. I'm so excited. Such a, such an, such a happy guy right now, but evil dead rise fucks, man. I love that movie. I, I think my only thing with evil dead rise is like that franchise is so good. Like you can make a movie like evil dead rise and it's still not even close to the top of, <laughs> of the, um, of the rankings. Like I, I could, how could you rank the evil, the evil dead franchise? All five of those movies are fucking bangers. I don't know. I, I I've attempted, I've attempted to rank that franchise, but it, it's so interchangeable. I mean, my favorite Evil Dead film is the one I'm watching. They're, they're all so good. That and the Scream franchise, I think, are all just like, like are both just so consistent. N nothing is more consistent than those two franchises. But Terrifier Two, I think, is very special because it took a movie that I did really enjoy when I first saw it, and then made it made it even better. Like just, oh my god, blew it out of proportion. I liked it so much. So. I don't know. It's it's really tough. It's so tough to say which one I like, which one I like more. Great, great movies though. Great stuff there. Noah Atkinson has been a member for six months. Thank you so much for the support, man. I really appreciate that. Saying Friday the Thirteenth requel for next year, June Thirteenth of twenty twenty three. That would work. There you go. You got yourself a Friday the Thirteenth release date, man. That's <laughs> that's when it's got to come out, right? Oh God, I want that movie to happen so bad. We have Blumhouse saying um, that they're interested in it. And I know some people hear that and they're like, no, don't let Blumhouse get their filthy hands all over Jason Voorhees. I, I say go for it, honestly. I, I there's Are there better studios to do it? Sure. But like, I wouldn't be against it. The, the only thing I, I have so many mixed feelings about Blumhouse, man. This is a company that puts out some banging paranormal horror flicks like Insidious, Sinister. Um, fuck, I even really liked Megan from last year. That was so much fun. But then they also do things like Imaginary and Night Swim, which are literally just ripping off other movies that they've put out. And I'm just like, wh why? Like, why are we doing this? Why, why are we allowing this to happen, man? So I really mix feelings on them. But when it comes to slashers, they don't miss that often. For the most part, I really like what they did with the Halloween franchise, for the most part. Um, and I, I don't know, th those were fun. I, I would not be against something similar with the Friday the 13th franchise. Honestly, the biggest problem with the new Halloween trilogy was the fact that they tried to tell this long story across all three of those movies. And then they kind of just decided to give up um, in, in the third entry. They just were like, oh, we're telling a different story now. I think to to change that a bit with Friday the 13th, just make each make three movies, make them all pocket stories that feature Jason Voorhees killing camp counselors, have a different director do all three of them, too. Like that's, that's the best way to do it. In my opinion, I, I think just have someone different do each movie. Cause if you look at any other requel franchise where it's basically been the same director on all three films, they all kind of just, they, it just feels like they lose steam by the time you get to that third entry. So for me, have that, that first time energy from all, all those directors come through in all three of those movies. You want to make three requel films. You want to get your bag. I get it. I get it. You want to make some money, but Throw good directors at each movie who are very excited to do it. Don't have them try to make a try to stretch a story that could have been told in like one movie or two into three. I guess is my point. <laughs> but I'm excited. <laughs> that was really long winded. Sorry, Noah. I, I, I go on rants sometimes. I can't help it. But I'm I'm here for a Blumhouse Friday the Thirteenth. I just they just got to do it right. They just got to do it right. I just want another Friday. I just want Jason on the big screen, guys. I'm I'm a simple guy. At the end of the day, I just want someone to do it. It's been far too long. 2009, baby. What's going on? What's going on? Um, what else is happening here? T Tanza, what's up, dog? How's it going? Jake, who are your top three favorite ghost face killers out of all of them? I gotta re rank these because I, you know, we got new people on the channel now. People are like, I, I haven't seen these videos, Jake. I gotta, I gotta do that. I gotta make those, gotta make those videos. Top three favorite ghost face killers. Um, probably Stu. Ah, uh, Stu, Jill, and Mickey, maybe. Stu, Jill, Mickey, probably my three favorites. I think Mickey's really underrated. I He could have been better, in my opinion, but his motive is so cool. I, that's what Scream 2 should have been all about. I think Scream 2 would be my favorite film in the whole franchise if they made that film all about Mickey, opposed to Billy's mom. But th those three are my, those three are probably my favorite, all in all. All Kevin Williamson. All from Kevin Williamson. Um, Scream films too. I just realized that. That's cool. 
Davey Show is saying, great news about Scream 7. Also looking forward to Ghostbusters Frozen Empire. Looks really good. Hell yeah, dog. I'm, I'm excited for it. I'm seeing it tomorrow night, and I'll have a review up on the page for the Frozen Empire. Very hyped. I hope it's good, man. Afterlife was a lot of fun, and I'm hoping that this one is even better. It, it, this one feels a little more like Ghostbusters. It's in New York City. We got Dan Aykroyd saying shit like, oh, it's the death chill. Like, that gives me, like, Ghostbusters 2 vibes in the best way possible, and I don't know. There's something about that trailer I'm just, I was really vibing with. I'm like, this feels more Ghostbusters than the last film. Not that I didn't like Afterlife, but there's something about that New York setting. It plays a big factor into what, what gives Ghostbusters its specific vibe, I think. Uh, Sinister could have had uh, a good sequel. That's not the one we got, though. No reason not to try again. Sinister Sinister 2 is fine. It's so fine, man. It's it's so fine. I don't know. I, it doesn't even come close to the original. I agree, but it's fun. It's like, it's whatever. Bluck is saying they said they were making a Sinister universe with Black Phone and, and Sinister. I heard that a long time ago about Insidious and Sinister. They were going to try to cross those into the same universe. I don't remember hearing that about the Black Phone. I mean, same director, same creative team behind both, so that makes sense, but... I just remembered, like, a long time ago, they were like, we're gonna make that the same franchise, like Insidious and Sinister, and I'm like, that's cool, okay. Why did they, Why do we never do anything with that? That's such a shame. Top three ghost faces, Mickey, Billy, and Stu. Hell yeah, Bubble Pirate. Good choices. Billy's dope as fuck. <laughs> with his greasy hair. I love it. Um, Corey from Halloween went from Peter Parker to to Venom for no reason, basically. <laughs> yeah, yeah, basically, <laughs> pretty much. It's a uh, listen, man. David Gordon Green was just channeling his inner Spider-Man three. Okay, what's wrong with that? What's <laughs> what's wrong with the little Spider-Man three in Halloween? Oh, man. Ryan uh, Swayze is saying, what's your thoughts on the Halloween show? Uh, I'm excited for it. You know, I hear a lot of people, you know, saying exactly what I was expecting from what a, when a Halloween show got announced. They're like, man, you know, th this just sounds like they're trying to do a Halloween 2018 and tell us it's something different. But I'm, uh, I don't know, man. I, I think it could be good. I still have that opinion that I just feel like a lot of horror shows based off of movie IPs are not very good lately. I don't know what it is. I don't know what's in the water that makes uh, the TV shows just not as good. It's always in the writing for me, personally. I'm like, the, the writing on these shows just doesn't compare to the movies. There's exceptions, like the Evil Dead show I thought was phenomenal all the way through. Loved that show. It has, you know, it's got its dips here and there, but I mean, fuck, the, the, as, a, as a whole, thing's fucking awesome. Couldn't recommend Ash vs. the Evil Dead more. It's so much fun. But um, thoughts on the, the Halloween show? I don't know. I'm, I'm a little michael out, I guess. I'm, I'm a little Michaeled out. We just got two movies with him. You heard me too. Um, <laughs> but whatever this show does, though, I'm gonna watch it. I'll check it out for sure. I'm a huge fan of the franchise. I'm, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say no to more Halloween, you know. But I guess uh, there's just other things on my radar that I'm more excited about right now. But I'm gonna give it I'm gonna give it a try, give it a watch, and hopefully it's good. Fingers crossed. I, I want some good horror TV, man. I, I cover movies on here because there hasn't been too many shows that really have captured my interest as much lately. I also just, you know, watching a show is a bigger commitment, man. It's a lot more time. You're putting a lot more time and effort into into watching that. The Bear was one that I couldn't put down personally, but I don't think you guys care because, you know, we got, a, we got a horror audience here, but The Bear was so fucking good. I could not... I've watched it three times now. Um, whenever I'm trying to fall asleep, I just put on the next episode of that. It's so good. Uh, could not recommend more. One of my favorite shows on television right now. Davy Shaw is saying, is it true that Sydney is back for Scream 7? That would be awesome. It is true. That is 100% confirmed, Davy. Not a rumor. Not any, you know, not Jake coming on here and saying, take this with a grain of salt, guys. No. Uh, fuck that shit. Sydney's back. Nev Campbell's in it. She posted on her Instagram recently saying that she has the script for Scream 7 and that she's returned to the franchise. It's very exciting stuff. It's a really exciting time for the, the Scream franchise, for sure. It's a weird time, though, because, you know, we're still in the wake of Melissa Barrera being fired in a kind of shitty manner for something that I don't think she should have been fired for. Um, but we do have Sydney back, and that's exciting. Do I have faith in this movie? I don't know. I'm, I got... I got mixed feelings about it at the moment because I do feel like Spyglass is trying to save face and a lot of the decisions they make won't be to actually make the movie good, but to, you know, just make it more appealing, which doesn't always mean good. So we'll see. We'll see, Davey. I'm, I'm holding out for it. I hope Scream 7's a banger, but I, I have a feeling that it, it might suck. But let's hope not. 
I really hope we will see Hayden Panettiere return for Scream 7. I think that would be that would be cool. Be really cool to see Kirby back. She's a character I'm very intri intrigued by right now. You know, she's an FBI agent now. That's that's interesting to me. She's not just the same old, you know, um, angsty teen that we saw in Scream 4. She's a very, they, they've very much so revitalized the character and taken her down a different route. She could serve as the police presence in the movie and also kind of have that investigative side. I think she's almost like a mixture of Gale and Dewey now, which is something that I feel like is very necessary. Um... For Scream 7, you know, we won't have Dewey return, unfortunately. I would love to see David Arquette uh, back in these movies, but he is, uh, Dewey is very dead, unfortunately. R.I.P. I know some people are, are not big fans of that. <laughs> uh, I never talk about TV shows or something. I, I didn't think the Exorcist series could be good, but it was. Oh, that was... Okay, you're you're right. I forgot about that one. Ash vs. Evil Dead, also pleasantly surprised. Yeah, the Exorcist series, I got a few episodes into that, and I just never finished it. Once again, I'm just... I'm so bad at finishing TV shows, man. Like, it's gotta be, like, the t the cream of the crop, or I don't... I just don't finish it. I'm sure the Exorcist, Exorcist series is fantastic. I just... I got, like, two or three episodes into it, man. Like, um... To be completely honest, I'm sure it's fantastic. I got to watch it. Um, got to finish it. My, my folks have watched it and they said, like, it's so good. Like, you got to watch it. And I'm like, ah, oh, man, I'm sorry. I'm just, I'm so busy. So busy. I, I want to get through that, though, for sure. I've heard nothing but good things about it. Uh, Mr. L is saying the Melissa drama hasn't left my conscience. Uh, unfortunately, it will always leave a bitter taste in my mouth when talking about Scream 7. Yeah, dude, I mean, no doubt, no doubt. I think that's how it goes for most people, too. I I don't know. It sucks. I don't think Spyglass is going to... Even if Spyglass, you know, wanted her in the movie at this point, I feel like that, that bridge is burned. There's re really just no solace to this. You know what I mean? It sucks. I think that's kind of why, no matter what happens with Scream 7, I, I'm kind of in the same boat. I'm just going to have this negative connotation. There's gonna There's always going to be an asterisk next to this movie. Does that make sense? Like, there's always going to be just like, ah, eh, whatever this ends up being, I just always am going to think to myself, this could have been better. For whatever reason. And Garrett, I'm I'm also, I'm hitting it with you too, man. Good chance Scream 7 is too much fan service instead of a good story. That's what I think. They're just, Spyglass is going to sugarcoat this thing no matter what it is. If it's a turd or a cupcake underneath there. <laughs> yeah. You know, I'm just, I hope it's good, man. I hope, I hope, I hope I'm wrong. I hope I'm dead wrong. You know, but just, with the decisions that are being made, the way they're unveiling everything, it comes off... Like, think about it, right? Spyglass could have posted on their Instagram that Nev Campbell was back, that Kevin Williamson was directing, but Nev Campbell posted that. That's where that's specifically where the announcement came from. Um, what was that? Like, last Tuesday? Like, last week? What, you know, why do you think that it came from there first? Because, of you know, people love Nev Campbell, of course. Of course it's going to come from her first. So, I don't know. That's just me being a conspiracy nut, but... I do believe that they're going to do everything in their power to try to win back the, the the fans of this franchise. I mean, if you were in that position, you would do the same. So I, I get it, but I feel like they're going to go overboard with it and just try to be like, oh, it's just fan service, fan service, fan service. I just want a good Scream movie, you know? Watching Scream 6 again, I'm just like, there's so much fan service, man. Like, I, I love a lot of what's going on with this story. I love a lot of the sequences here. A lot of this is super scary and super fun. But there is a lot of moments in six that the more I watch it, the more I'm like, okay, this scene's great, but this scene, I'm just like, okay, we get it. You're like the Scream franchise is fucking awesome, dude. Let's move on, you know? Like, <laughs> I'm just like, let's come on, let's get to the cool story that's happening here. So I don't know. Ryan Swayze is saying, do you think we will get a new Nightmare on Elm Street? Um, that's a great question. I I hope so. I really hope that we get something from it. Would love a new Freddy outing at some point soon. Um, it's still kind of, I don't know, there's still no real big news about that. We were just talking about, you know, the Alien and Predator franchises all, you know, kind of building up to a new AVP movie, which I do believe is probably going to happen. I think the same could happen with Friday the 13th and Nightmare Next, you know, a couple years down the line or whatever, but I hope it happens. I hope we kind of have start to see the... Um, start of that, you know, you get a good Nightmare movie, you get a good Friday movie, builds up to a Versus movie, a new Freddy versus Jason. I think that would be fun. I think that would be really cool. So I'm really hoping for that, Ryan. Um, would love to see both of those titans on the big screen again. Some of our favorite slashers back on the big screen. Oh, 
Oh, all right, ladies and gentlemen, I, I got to get going. I just wanted to keep keep you updated with what's been going on with Alien, Romulus, Beetlejuice 2 in a violent nature. All these movies, all exciting stuff. I didn't want to make a video today. So thanks for listening to me ramble for like an hour and 20 minutes. <laughs> Um, I have no idea when I'll be posting again, probably tomorrow night. Um, probably talking about Ghostbusters, Frozen, uh, maybe that one first. I don't know. I'm <laughs> still figuring out the schedule, but I will have some, like a shit ton of reviews out this weekend, pretty much for the next couple of days. It's, it's all going to be reviews. And then I'll probably get back on the whole scream theory train thing again, but coming soon. Check it out. Thanks for watching. And as always, don't forget to kill it out there. Y'all peace out.